Hello guys, today we'll be covering a 2018 mystery thriller film called A Deadly View. The crime rate in the US has been increasing for the past couple of years, and the situation is more apparent in most cities. After Rachel's traumatizing robbery seven months ago in their old neighborhood, she and her husband Peter have recently moved to the suburbs. Since Rachel is now pregnant, they want to start their family in a peaceful and quiet environment. They've just moved in and there are many boxes left to unpack. But Peter restricts Rachel to move around lifting those heavy boxes, since she's just one month away from her due date. Rachel is a writer and a former newspaper editor. But since she's unemployed at the moment, Rachel's starting to feel frustrated in this new place. It's Sunday morning, but Peter needs to go to the office to sort out his workload, as he plans on taking a long paternity leave. As he leaves for the office, Rachel waves at her new neighbor standing in the driveway, but the man does not wave back at her. In the afternoon, Rachel makes a trip to the bakery where she meets Grace, her new neighbor who lives across the street. As they talk, she talks about how much she likes Rachel's aura. Also, Grace mentions that since the baby is going to be born on the full moon, it's going to be a powerful baby. From their conversation, Rachel comes to know that her mother-in-law, Patricia, has told the whole neighborhood about her. Back home, Rachel is sighing, looking at loads of groceries, just when Yvonne comes up to her. Yvonne lives just in front of her house across the street. She just had a child six months ago, but to maintain her shape, she's hired a nanny for her child. She tells Rachel that she's also a writer who writes about maternity issues in her blog. Then Yvonne tells Rachel that she's happy to hire her as a freelancer and provide her with exposure, but Rachel kindly declines her offer. Now comes her next door neighbor Sandy, who offers to carry the heavy grocery bags. Even though Rachel tells her to leave the bags at the front door, Sandy invites herself in and puts the groceries in the kitchen. She then explains to Rachel that since there's nothing much happening in the town, all the neighbors are getting a little interested in the newcomers. Rachel and Sandy hit it off instantly. When Sandy asks her why they moved into this neighborhood, Rachel shares the horrific experience that she had in the city. Then she brings Sandy to the nursery room that will be for her daughter. Looking at the kids' stuff in the boxes, Sandy's lost in her thoughts for a moment. She reveals that she couldn't get pregnant with her husband, and due to this, they ended up getting divorced. Leaving aside her sad backstory, she offers to help set up the nursery for Rachel. Moments later, the nursery is all set up and Rachel thanks Sandy for her help. Just then, Sandy notices a poster of Alice in Wonderland and tells Rachel that she likes it as well. Rachel mentions that she wants her daughter to be as adventurous as Alice. Pointing at a baby monitor that has features of live streaming, Sandy says that the technologies have made it easier for people. Now that her work is done, Sandy tells Rachel that she can just wave if she needs her. At night, while Rachel is chatting about her day with Peter, she looks out the window and sees Yvonne and her husband being intimate in the comfort of their house. When she looks around, she notices Grace's husband, Gary, standing below, enjoying the show. Before going to bed, Rachel goes to the washroom and hears some noise coming from downstairs. She calls her husband, but since he's in deep sleep, she goes to check on her own. Rachel then goes to the kitchen, but since they've not organized the utensils yet, she grabs a melon to defend herself. Suddenly, the lights come on, only to realize that it's Patricia. Rachel is not so happy with her sudden and unannounced visit. The next morning, while having lunch, Rachel savagely mentions that one should knock before entering someone's house. But instead of apologizing, Patricia calls out Rachel for playing security guard when she should be resting. Nevertheless, Rachel gets angry at Peter for not standing up for her in front of his mother before walking away. She comes to the nursery to calm herself, while the dog barking outside attracts her attention. She looks through the window and observes the neighbor's activities for a while, and she falls asleep on the chair by the window. When she wakes up, it's already dark and the first thing she sees is Gary looking at Yvonne's window. But to her surprise, it's not Yvonne whom she sees at the window, it's her nanny. At the same time, Yvonne returns and sees her husband cheating on her with their nanny. She raises her hand to hit the nanny, but the lights go off, making it difficult to see what's happening. Still, the screaming continues across the street as Gary walks away with his dog. Rachel immediately calls 911, assuming that someone might have been heard in Yvonne's house. When the police arrive in the neighborhood, they start questioning the neighbors. Soon, two police officers come to Rachel's house and tell them that it was just a dispute between spouses. When she questions them about the nanny, the officers say that the nanny quit her job in the afternoon. Patricia begs pardon for Rachel's behavior and blames her traumatic experience for her anxieties to kick in. She even takes the chance to bring out the last night incident when Rachel assumed her to be a burglar. Peter tries to console her, but Rachel states that Gary has also seen the nanny. But the police have talked with Gary and confirmed that he's seen nothing. 
She flips out upon hearing this and explodes with anger when no one believes her. While the officers are still there, she excuses herself to go to the washroom. As soon as she reaches the washroom, she screams for Peter. It turns out she freaked out because of bleeding. Fortunately, the baby's healthy, but bleeding during pregnancy can be a serious issue, so the doctor suggests she have complete bed rest until she delivers. As soon as she returns back home, Rachel goes to chat with Yvonne despite Peter trying to stop her. But Yvonne slams the door in Rachel's face and tells her she has nothing to say to her. Feeling dejected, she comes back home and Peter consoles her by saying they should give her some more time. At that moment, Patricia enters with her luggage and declares that she's there to help them until Rachel delivers a healthy baby. Peter is genuinely happy to have her around, but Rachel focuses on a smile on her face. Rachel's now confined within her room and Patricia watches over her. Looking through the window, she once again sees Gary standing below Yvonne's house. She's sure that Gary has also seen things that day. So avoiding Patricia's watchful eyes, Rachel sneaks out and goes to Grace's house, hoping to talk with him. But Grace does not let her meet him. Rachel asks why he lied to the police and tells her that he saw Gary looking at the nanny. Now Grace becomes angry that she's trying to accuse her husband who has Alzheimer's. She warns Rachel not to drag her husband into the problem and to mind her own business. As she's walking back dispirited, Sandy's standing on her driveway. Since Rachel's already out of her confinement, Sandy invites her to go out with her and have a little fun. She takes her to the bakery and tells her that she believes in her. Sandy then reveals that the nanny and the husband did have an affair, but she also knows that Yvonne can't kill anyone. Immediately after she returns back home, Patricia berates Rachel for vanishing and spying on the neighbors. She was on the verge of calling the police when she couldn't find Rachel in her room. Then Patricia orders her to stay in bed for the sake of her baby. That evening, Patricia brings Rachel some dinner in her room and informs her that Peter is going to be late. She then takes Rachel's phone with her because Patricia and Peter both think that the electronic device is stimulating her imagination. As she walks out of the room, she puts on some classical music and instructs her to ring the bell if she wants anything. Peter comes home later that night and surprises her with Chinese food. Since Patricia is out for her bridge night, they spend quality time reminiscing about their relationship journey. Rachel expresses that she feels cooped up in the house and utters that she wants to go outside to feel refreshed. Peter finds a way to make her wish come true in such a way that it hurts no one. The next day, he creates a small space in the backyard where Rachel can breathe some fresh air and rest. While Rachel's reading a book in the backyard, Sandy comes in through the side gate to chit-chat with her. Soon enough, Rachel shares her secret of having anxiety issues with Sandy. She discloses that she's not taken the antidepressant since becoming pregnant. Hearing this, Sandy tells her that she also had to rely on the pills in the past. She also mentions that once people discontinue the pills, they start feeling a little paranoid as the body is adapting to the change. Touching Rachel's stomach, Sandy talks about how she must feel after having her baby. She also adds that she does not have to worry about the baby since this suburb is safe and nothing violent happens in this neighborhood. Right from this point onward, Rachel feels like Sandy's caring demeanor has turned into a creepy obsession with her unborn baby. At night, Rachel's having trouble sleeping, so she goes to the window and gazes at the peaceful night view. But she's startled to see Sandy standing in front of her house and staring straight into her window. The next morning, Rachel asks Patricia if she knows anything about Sandy. Patricia admits that she does not like Sandy and finds her suspicious. She tells Rachel that when Sandy bought the house, she paid in cash, as if she didn't want to leave behind any records. Later that day, knowing that Rachel spent her day looking through the window, Peter gets mad at her for her obsession with the neighbors. The couple gets into a conflict due to this very reason. As Peter walks out the door, Rachel overhears Patricia telling him that she's become paranoid. She goes by the window and is shocked to see Sandy taking out the Alice in Wonderland poster from her car. Late at night, Peter comes to apologize and Rachel frantically tells him that Sandy has bought the exact same poster as theirs. Now Peter thinks that Rachel is overreacting in such a trivial manner. She's too stunned to speak as he does not believe her words. Peter tells her that she might be having a nervous breakdown and that they should call the doctor. But Rachel tells him that instead of the doctor, they should call the police and she starts dialing the number. However, Peter stops her from calling the police. The next morning, while she's in the backyard, Peter brings her some medicine after consulting with the doctors. When he leaves, she takes some of the pills and dozes off. Next, Sandy's sudden appearance startles her. She puts her bag on the chair and shows Rachel the ice cream that she's bought for her craving. But since the weather's quite chilly, she goes to put it in the freezer. And while Sandy's out of sight, Rachel takes the keys out of her bag. Now that she has keys to Sandy's house, Rachel is in high spirits since she can now prove that she's not crazy. After unlocking the main door of Sandy's house, 
she sees blank photo frames on the wall. She looks into different rooms, but one of the rooms leaves her shocked and speechless. Rachel sees that Sandy has copied her nursery room and has even hung the same poster. She then sees a photo of a couple in which Sandy looks pregnant. Just when Rachel is reading Peter's text, Sandy is just about to reach the house. While she's hurriedly leaving, she puts the photo frame turned over and slams her knee on a chair. When she's almost at the foot of the stairs, she hears Sandy's voice, so she hides there. When Sandy comes in, Rachel makes it look like she's just come in to give her the key that she's found in her house. However, the photo frame has given it all away, and now Sandy knows that Rachel has been to her place. Later, Patricia takes Rachel to the hospital after looking at the bruised knee. In the hospital, the doctor affirms the knee to be alright, but the blood pressure level is concerning. The doctor once again tells her to have a complete rest and not to stress too much. That night, as the couple is getting ready for bed, they hear news about a six-month-old girl being abducted in broad daylight. As Peter's giving her a foot massage, she sees Sandy carrying a little baby out of her car. But when Peter looks out of the window, Sandy's already gone. Once again, Rachel is freaking out, but her husband doesn't believe her. She then loses her composure and throws a book at him, and with this, she collapses. Next, police are called, and Rachel still insists that Sandy has the kid that was kidnapped. She says that Sandy has her nursery as well. The police question her about how she knows that, and asks if she's been there. Now, Patricia has had enough, and she scolds Rachel for acting crazy. Following this, everyone is requested to leave the room when one officer gives her his card and asks her to call her in case of an emergency. The next morning, Peter covers the window in their room with plywood. Later, when Sandy comes to visit Rachel to clear things up with her, Rachel also apologizes for all the misunderstandings. After Sandy leaves, Rachel brings the baby monitor and sets the camera outside the window. And while she's watching the live stream on her phone, she's shaken up to see Sandy looking straight into the camera. The next morning, Sandy pays a surprise visit to Rachel. She pulls out the camera and calls her out for spying on her. Then she tells Rachel that since she's not been taking good care of herself and the baby, she is there to take care of them. Just when Sandy walks out, Rachel immediately thinks of calling the police officer from the previous night. Unfortunately, before she could leave a complete voice message, Sandy comes back to the room and shows her the live footage streaming on her phone. Sandy then admits that she could have taken good care of the baby, unlike Yvonne, who does not even want one. Creepily, she even confesses to kidnapping a baby, but denies killing the nanny. Now, with Rachel's baby, she mentions that her dream is finally getting fulfilled. Next, Patricia is knocked out in a scene lying on the floor. Holding Rachel at knife point, Sandy takes her to her house. She then takes Rachel to the nursery that she's moved downstairs after Rachel had discovered it. Once there, Sandy reveals that she was set to have twins, but unfortunately, she lost her babies, and her husband blamed her for it. Seeing an opening, Rachel smashes a vase on Sandy's head, grabs the baby, and runs out of the house. She blocks the door with a chair, but at the same moment, her water breaks. As Rachel starts going into labor, Sandy manages to break out. Now that her water's broken, Sandy plans to operate on Rachel herself to get the baby out. But thankfully, Officer Lee arrives at that moment, knocks Sandy out, and calls an ambulance. Meanwhile, Rachel tells the officer that the baby inside the house might be the kidnapped baby from the news. While Officer Lee is giving her attention to Rachel, Sandy gets up and hits the officer with a stick. Then Sandy accuses Rachel of not caring about the baby, because if she did, she'd be at home resting. Before Sandy could grab the knife and attack her, Rachel takes Officer Lee's gun and shoots Sandy in the head. Later, Rachel delivers a healthy baby girl, and the kidnapped baby is reunited with her family. At last, Peter and Patricia apologize for not believing in her. After all that's happened, Rachel expresses her desire to move back to the city in the coming days, and Peter agrees to it. The End